Hello and welcome to this week's edition of the Zazu Plaz Story Quarter Hour. <laughs> I am your host, Des, Leslie Billito Plazic, aka Zazu Plaz, at my whole watering hole here. It's a little bit stagnant water today versus last week. Ah. Uh, I got out. Oh. I've got a bucket chart, which means anybody who knows astrology, there's, it's like a basket. And up at the top where my Jupiter and my Midheaven and my North Node are, there's a little handle. <laughs> kind of like this. And I'm right here right now. <laughs> the top. Ah, kind of like Steven Tyler in the Polar Express after Santa takes off and after all the presents are gone, all the elves led by Steven Tyler on a unicycle, uh, they dance to that song. He said, standing on top of the world, dancing on top of the world, Ooh -hoo, dancing on top of the world. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, that's where I am right now. Standing on the top of the world. Today, June 27th, 2021, would have been my parents' 62nd wedding anniversary. And as some of you might know, if you watched last week, uh, you know that my mom passed away on June 19th, which was uh, last week. And uh, the same day we had my son's graduation party which went great and uh, everybody had a good time and I think I think mom was there in spirit uh, and so this week I'm just going to show the pictures first as I said you know what should I talk about it's pretty obvious what I should talk about in a way but I've been awash with so many different emotions and thoughts and people and feelings and moments <laughs> in the past week uh, I find the most clarity when I come out here and I come into my heart space and I simplify. So I've been simplifying and I'm grateful for all the outpourings of sympathy and condolences and that. And yet I, at the same time, I think that you can learn a lot about yourself um, through other people when especially during times like weddings funerals which are basically the same thing except that one the guest of honor wears white and all the guests try not to wear white and at the other one the guest of honor is not present but dressed in anything but black and everybody's wearing black you see you see there? Because if you, you know, you look at, they used to have people, you know, in caskets and stuff. And then my mom was way ahead of her time. She said, no, I'm not going to have people looking at me. That's just, you know, and it's so much better that way. We're going to have a little private urn, you know, internment with like five of us. And then, uh, and then there's going to be a mass. Of course, there has to be a mass, and a luncheon after. So really, if you think about it, and my husband's and my anniversary is July 1st, which is also this week. In last week's, in last year's episode, I talked about the day at the beach, you know, and we we're celebrating um, at the ocean when my son was one, and uh, you know, what a glorious day. Um, and we've always, you know, we had our anniversaries within the same week, so we would always celebrate together. So I think it's a day. And, you know, everybody grieves or celebrates in their own way, but I, I really think they're two close sides of the same coin. And not just because I'm a person who, in a way, you know, I, I sort of, I like my freedom. So the idea of marriage is kind of like, you know, it's like um, 
John Mellencamp. I fight authority, and authority always wins, you know. I've been doing it since I was a young kid, and I come out grinning. <laughs> That's me. I don't like to be tied down, especially at this time of year. So the fact that I actually got married, I don't know what I was thinking. But it's worked out okay. I mean, as long as, you know, as long as I have a spouse who kind of lets me do what I want, I'm good. Um, which is, you know, my husband is, <laughs> there we are, I'm feeding him the cake. <laughs> He's just standing there. <sighs> See, isn't he handsome? He's cute. I'm feeding him the cake. I didn't, I didn't, we didn't drop any cake. I didn't want to do one of those reality show nightmare things where the people shove the cake at each other. Um, but the other picture I wanted to show is my, my parents at my wedding at the venue which was called the Jester's Court. If you can believe that, Jester's Court. <laughs> if you've seen the cover of my book, my dog has a Jester's hat on. The Jester is, of course, the one who ent entertains the king, you know, uh, helps him from taking himself, keeps him from taking himself too seriously. That's what I'm here for. But uh, see my parents, look at my mom. She's so pretty and Uncle Mo there yawning. Yeah, he's, he's bored. But he did, he did a reading at my wedding. Look at mom and dad, they're so proud. They're, they were given their, they, they came into the reception. They're giving all their friends high fives. Like, we well, finally got rid of her. Yeah, let this guy deal with her. <laughs> they were a little bit too happy, I think. And there's mom. There's mom dancing at my wedding. Look at her. And that's how I, I like to think of her. Not at the end. That wasn't her. She was long gone. Look at her, how happy and pretty she is dancing with dad. There's dad there in the black dark suit. Um, and all the relatives, you know, scattered around. So, uh, so I said, you know what? It's all right there. Except now, you know, I, I look back at the pictures and my mom's looking right at me. She's been with me all week. She's, she's going to be hanging out. Um, so what did I want to say? Yeah, um, in, in a way it's all this stuff that's going on astrologically. My husband and my son, Brennan, they're going over to help my dad. He's got to get rid of some furniture. And I, ironically, uh, Ben needs some furniture. <laughs> the kids need dressers and beds and outgrowing their old stuff. So, you know, reuse, recycle, all that kind of stuff. I'm just going to go home and make a uh, tortellini salad with chicken and, uh, you know, have something to come back home to. I'll go over and, you know, see whatever been a week of helping him we got the obituary done we're planning and ironically we're planning a party for after mom's memorial mass and I'm like you can't make this stuff up you know uh, so I said well we're looking for places we're gonna have a party after after the well I guess if you call it funeral mass memorial mass and uh, you know, looking at all these places. Uh, <laughs> so I've noticed there's a lot, a lot of cousins and people, you know, who are reaching out to me and, oh, you know, offering varying degrees of clinginess and weakness and emotionality and stuff to me that, you know, I have to admit, sometimes I get a little angry, and that's my primary emotion, you know? I mean, I think I handle sadness and happiness pretty well. It's the anger I have a, <laughs> I have a tough time with. <laughs> I'm like, I just want to punch this person in the face right now, but I have to be grieving, I guess. I don't know, but you know, this is why I exercise so much. Because my primary emotion is anger. Like, okay, 
the thing is, when you have a bucket chart, right, and the top of my chart is in Cancer, which is the crab. That's the, that's the part of me, my midheaven, that I show to the world, right? I'm trying to grab, I'm trying to get my book and my, and my, my business off the ground, and I'm trying to climb to the top, right? And I'm at the top, I'm at the top. And everybody's trying to drag me back down into the bucket. They want to be me to be down, hanging out in the pool of crabs that's gonna get eaten. And I'm not gonna be part of that. So if you're trying to drag me down in the bucket, not going to work. I'm not going to be in the soup with you. I thank you for your kind words. I love you, but I have to set boundaries. I have to live my life the way I see fit. And what a life it is. So I'm going to, I wanted to get up and talk, you know, First at the church, the church isn't allowing anybody to get up and to talk. I have a cousin who's going to read, she's going to do a poem, which is her thing because she, uh, she wrote several books of poetry. She's a few years older than me. She's into like Joni Mitchell and hippy dippy stuff. And... That's not me. <laughs> I love you. If you're listening to this, I love you, L. But, uh, L.S., but, um, I don't even know who Joni Mitchell is. I don't even know who she is. Is she the one who did that parking lot song? I don't even know. But, you know, people, it's very interesting. People sympathize or they show sympathy um, in a way that displays their fears. How fearful they are, you know? And, uh, and, uh, so, and it shows you, and if something kicks you off, it shows you what you dislike in yourself, right? Weakness, um, pass, passivity, um, depending on others, leaning on others, all those things are absolutely on my list of do not do, you know, lift people up, you know, review their book, perhaps on Amazon. You could do that. That would be a great thing to do for me right now. Help lift me up. My mom is gone. She lived a beautiful life. And that's what she's actively trying to do right now is lift everybody up. She had a box of angels. Uh, that she had given me, and uh, she said to sell them, you know, assuming I would sell them and put them back into the business, and, uh, and before she died, she said, did you sell those angels yet? And I said, no. She seemed really annoyed. She's like, I don't know, you didn't even open the box. And I said, oh, she's mad at me because I dilly-dally sometimes. I don't know why, but uh, this week, I finally opened that box of angels. There were six angels, neatly wrapped in a box. First one I took out was an angel, no lie, holding a heart like this, with little wire wings. I put it, shed a little, oh, put it on my dresser. Then I opened the next one, and the next one was a was a woman holding a baby against child against her shoulder and I started cracking up I said oh my god she's laughing at me because she said when they handed me to her after the labor when I was born she said I went to put your head on my shoulder and burp you after your first feeding and she said your neck was was strong now Anybody who knows babies, newborns' necks are not strong. She said, I could not make you lie against my shoulder. She said, I couldn't do it. So she said, I gave you to the nurse. The nurse held my head against her shoulder and, and burped me and gave him back to my mom, at which point I looked at my mom as if to say, oh, it's you. <laughs> and that, that started it. <laughs> okay, so I'm letting you know. My relationship with my mom was um, 
you know, we were perhaps really alike. She was my teacher, you know? So um, I said, oh, this is funny. I said, this angel is not for me <laughs> because I never put my head on her shoulder like that. And then there was one holding a rose. And uh, I got a beautiful card from her friend, my mother's friend, whose name happens to be Rose. And I said, oh, they've been friends forever. And I said, I've got to give this angel to Rosie. And so on, so on, and so on. So I said, I'm going to keep the rest of these. And whoever I show them to, or whoever you know, comes forward, I will give the angels. Angels are very dear to my family. In fact, I feel protected all the time and uh, even my mom had given my dad last story I promise this little crystal and then had an angel inside with little white columns and little design so my dad said he put it in his pocket when he went to the funeral home to pick out her urn and he said I kid you not he's like I looked at him and there was this one on the end and it had an angel on it it was the same angel with the little white columns and the little swirly thing. And he said he almost fell over because it was clearly, maybe it was her guardian angel, but she was clearly helping him with this decision-making process, which, you know, when you're a grieving spouse can be arduous and difficult. But he said, I knew right there and that was it. And he has been guided all week. He's been, he's shown un, I, I think I know where I get a lot of my superpowers from, my parents. They're superheroes, both of them. Yeah. My dad, he's got a whole house cleared out, the whole lawn mowed, and he's out there, 84 years old, mowing the lawn and doing the weeds. He's saying, you've got to keep busy. More has gotten done in the past week since, because my mom was sick and he couldn't do stuff. And there's the sun. <laughs> and uh, yeah so I think um, I think that Zazu is the precursor Zazu is the person I turn into when you know it hits the fan <laughs> so to speak from last week um, yeah so, and I and I'm gonna and I'm gonna make one one more um, one more statement here, and it's letting me talk. Wow, Mercury retrograde is over. I got I got my videos back. So I like to say it's all about energy. Okay, if your life is organized, it's amazing what you can accomplish. But you have to let stuff go, you know? When you let the stuff go, it's obvious to you what you need to keep. And I've been praying for insight as to what to get rid of. And it's not so much, it shouldn't be a negative thing. It should be a, it should be a process, a gradual process that tells you something about yourself. When I look at this angel, this item, what is it saying to me? Who does it need to go to? You know, it, I looked at my mom's clothes and with joy, and I realized, you know, some of her tops I could see myself wearing. So I picked out three tops. It was like a red and white striped one with little flouncy sleeves and some, it was like a mint and black polka dot sweater that was very long. And she was shorter than me with a short waist. I said, I could totally wear that. There's a couple of things that were looked like she never even wore. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna keep that because it looks like a Zazu sweater or whatever. And the rest of the stuff, it's funny, but I came across some pictures. I, I remember this woman, her initials are JA. She and I were in the Business and Professional Women's Club back in the early 90s when I was in sales. And she was a high ranking human resource official at the one of the companies in Connecticut one of the companies that everybody in Hartford worked for 
that's kind of disbanded a little bit now. It's sold off in pieces and this and that. But so when she retired, she's uh, about my mom's age, a little younger than my mom. She now works at a at a clothing shop that sends the proceeds to a women and children's um, relief organization. It basically helps women and women to get you know be independent in the world and helps their children and, and education and support and all kinds of things. Uh, so I'm going to bring my mom's clothes to her and uh, you know I probably won't get any I mean I won't get paid for it but I'll get the satisfaction there's the sun again of um, you know women buying my mom's clothes and the proceeds going to to this organization to help women and children. Because my mom, you know, she wants, she wants people to donate to St. Jude's Children's Hospital because children are so dear to her and she had so many female friends and good female friends. I think she'd want that. And who knows, maybe my friend can help me, uh, you know, set up some events and I could do Zazu stuff and donate the money to this organization she's involved with. You never know in life, right? So if you open up your heart a little and give, you just never know where that's going to lead. You get it back. I have, I'm learning this. Yeah. So, anyway. Ah, I'm learning who I want in my life, who I could do without seeing every day. I love them. I send love to everyone. But uh, I'm, I want to create my own little universe, my life, basically. And I need to be free to do that. So anyway, that's it for the week. I'm, I'm going to close now. And, and uh, I wish you a wonderful week, and uh, may the sun shine on your face. May the cool breezes, uh, you know, may you have cool breezes through AC or natural breezes, especially if you're in one of those places where it's really hot. May you be high and dry if there's flooding. May there be a wind at your back, an angel surrounding you. Till next week, Zazu Plaz, signing out. Take care. <laughs>